Howdy you guys, it's Luke at Luke's APS and in this video I'm going to take you through how I painted this tabletop world house. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Right guys, so yes, in this video we're going to be taking you through how to paint this tabletop world house. Um, I was going to put it into one complete video, but I had a look through all my old videos and realised I've not done any videos on weathering. I've not done... I've not even done videos on like painting solid windows on terrain. You'd think from a terrain channel I'd have touched on these bits. It looks like I haven't. I thought I had. <laughs> I've done that much. I don't even know what I've done. Um, so. I've broke it down into basic painting and washing techniques uh, to get it to a, as you saw, a nice standard. And then we're going to take you through weathering and I'm going to do proper weathering techniques, something that I've not done on film before, even though I thought I had done, um, and show you all that next week. All right, guys. Um, so this is how I painted it to a pretty good standard, just using simple techniques. So sit down, relax, sit back, sit back, relax and have a cup of tea. Catch you after this. So first off I mix some brown paint and black ink with some uh, mixing medium um, just to make a wash for the overall model. Um, because we've base coated it already this is just to tie in and shade the areas. Make this quite watery as you don't want it too strong um, but it's just to bring out them deeper recesses. Now when you do this, um, I could add some flow aid to make it a little bit runnier so it drops into the recesses and looks like this. After a few hours it will be dry, um, it does take a rather long time to dry when you do it this way but it's a very nice quick and easy cheap way to do it. Now for painting I dry brush with a small brush like this uh, using skeleton bone on the um, on the Morton daub, whatever you want to call it. I even stipple it as well just to get some different colours and textures in there. Um, for the wood, I use a green grey. Um, I don't, I'm not a massive fan of brown wood. Um, I like to have a bit of greys and greens in there because that's the colour of wood, especially when it's weathered. Um, so just dry brush that all over the wood, um, paying more attention to the, the bits that be catching more sun. Like on this window, I go over the top, as in I really dry brush this uh, to really lighten the wood as it's on the top floor window, um, but we will be tying all this together later. Now on the roof, I use a terracotta red and I dry brush over, that, over the red primer that we put on the house in the first video. If you've not seen that, do check the link in the top right hand corner. But with dry brushing this, I'm not, it's not a proper dry brush, it's more of like an over brush. Um, but just keep brushing that on until you highlight the areas. Paying more attention to the centre of the roof tiles rather than the edges because I want them to darken closer to the, the wood and, and the edges where it would be darker. It's a way of simulating lighting and shading just with a dry brush. Now to bring that up again I use a Mars Red which is a very, more of an orange than a red um, and I just bring that on just to highlight it again. This is a very subtle dry brush um, just to bring out the colour but we are bringing this back down again with what I like to call a subtle wash which you'll see in a second. Then I'll just paint the chimneys in the same terracotta red that I did the tiles originally. Uh, we're not going to highlight these, we're just going to paint them in terracotta red. Now for the stonework I use a fog grey. This is blue grey. Um, it is rather light again, uh, but I'm only paying attention uh, to bricks that I want to be a bit paler. And in the next video we will go into um, changing the colour of a few bricks and blending it into the base that we did in the first video. Again, if you've not seen that, do check the links. And once you've dry brushed that up 
it should look pretty good um that's more than acceptable for tabletop um but i like to take them one step further with what i like to call my subtle washers To make this subtle wash, a lot of it is by eye and guesswork. Um, I use uh, like a ready brown ink, like almost sapia, um, and then I mix in um, a matte varnish. The reason I use varnish rather than medium, uh, matte medium, is because it has got a lot of fluid in there and it just goes into the um, the details and it more or less falls off the top surfaces. And you want to get this to more of a glaze-like consistency. Uh, as you can see, it runs off them flat areas, which I don't really want it to change the colour of the model. I just want to richen up some of the darker areas with the brown and the reds, just to give some subtle differences. Once you've got that all over, while it's still wet or damp, um, you can take a cloth to this and dab it off, sort of rag roll it, if that makes sense. And this sort of gives you some very different inconsistencies to it, which makes it look a bit more natural and a bit more weathered. Do this all over the model or any areas that you decide to. Now, what I don't like about showing these, shall we call them subtle washers? I mean, look, they're, they're, they're messy. <laughs> but what I don't like about doing these subtle washers or subtle weathering, whatever you want to call it on camera, is one, it's hard to sort of show you the viscosity of the wash, um, because what you're trying to sort of create is something that's not over pigmented, so something that's not going to just put smash loads of dark into the recesses. You sort of like, it's in between a wash and a glaze, so when you slap that on, you can rub it off the surface as well and it not sort of change the colour. It's one of the things that takes a bit of practice and there's no real ratio because all inks, all paints, depending on what you're using, is so, so different. And sometimes I've used the same batch of stuff and I've gone, oh, it's not really working on this model and added a bit more water. So it's one of the things you learn. And But the thing is, is when you do it, you look at it and go, has it done much? And it's such a subtle thing, it's really hard to show, but when you actually pick it up and look at it in person, you've got some really nice subtle shading that you wouldn't normally get. I'm loving how it's coming together. The great to paint is just, you can spend, I could spend a week painting these things because they're just unreal. But anyway, guys, sorry for this little pause and I'll, uh, I'll see you at the next step. Love, love, love. Right, once that subtle wash or whatever, glaze wash, whatever you want to call it, this is where it should look like. Again, it is very subtle, but it takes the orangeness out the red. It puts some nicer browny red colours into the um, into the plaster work. And it just adds a bit of rich, warm browns to the rocks and makes them look a bit more natural. Now, the finishing touches are just some... Uh, darker metal paints, um, any any will do, uh, just going over all the metal components on the house. Now these really do make the house stand out, I know they're only very small details but they do make a massive difference by painting these and having them a little bit brighter and a stand out a little bit make the catch your eye. Now for painting the windows and painting the iron uh, cross, cross hatches on the windows I dry brush them in the same metal. Now we will go into painting uh, the windows in the next video because how to make these look more like proper windows but just doing this dry brush of the metal on there and then putting a wash on sort of darkens up the areas around the metal and it just makes them look pretty nice just like that. So if you wanted to do put to like basic windows that are blocked in just put your wash on after you've dry brushed and they'll look pretty good just as they are. And once they're washed, you'll see what I mean. So guys, what did you think? Um, put in the comments below what you think to that as a just as a tabletop ready house painted and ready, just ready for the table. I, I really do like these houses. A couple of things though, I mean it's if you were just gonna buy a couple, slap a couple of colours on and just use them, I mean that's up to you, but <laughs> I couldn't do that. They're more detailed than a lot of miniatures that I paint. <laughs> so I can, you can literally put 
a week into painting these you can go absolutely mental um, so when you are painting them just be a bit careful because you can get quite carried away that they are just a pleasure to paint as a, as a model on their own okay it is nice just to sit down and I, I they've sent me one free of charge um, for me to build a diorama on which I'll, I'll I'll do later on but I might film me painting it up and stuff if you really want to but I'm going to go to town on that one and just take my time with it um, but yeah they're just such great models um, I can't knock them um, but anyway guys if you like these videos don't forget to like share and subscribe and hit the bell um, check out all my links below um, anything that I've used in this video should either be in my store or it'll be on Amazon affiliates all right guys I'll see you again next week for the next video uh, where we're going to be doing another one day build catch you later Love, love, love.